Hey, Tua, what's up, man? Um, I got a I got a jersey number question for you. Um, you and Kyler both wear number one, um, which has been pretty rare for quarterbacks. I wanted to ask, what was your reasoning behind deciding that number, and what what do you think about it being more popular for young quarterbacks wearing it? Yeah, well, I, I sat down and talked to my dad about that. Um, sat down with him, and um, his biggest thing to pick um, number one was for the audience of one and so that's more so like on the faith side of things so that's why I chose it. So I have no doubt that your number one concern is wins and losses but I would like to ask you um, individually speaking not as a team but individually speaking what constitutes a successful season for you this year? Well I think it's hard to speak individually um, because this is a team sport, you know, we play, we play this together. You need all 11 guys on the offense, all 11 guys on the defense, and all 11 guys on special teams. And in order for you to win and accomplish your individual goals, I mean, it, it, it contributes to everyone. Everyone needs to contribute and do their part. Um, you know, and, and that's what we're hopefully looking to, to improve on as an offense, um, you know, this upcoming week. You're starting to sound like Flo already, Tua. Um, I wanted to ask you about Kyler Murray, man. And, um, you know, you guys spent some time together during the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Um, you know, what's he like, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a player, as a friend? And how excited are you to kind of go up, to him, go up against him, you know, this week? I'm very excited to go up against him. I would say first impressions when I, when I met him, he's, you know, he's pretty jacked up, you know, for – for as you know, short as he is, he's, he's, I mean, this guy's rocked up, um, but he, he's very competitive. Um, you know, he's very personable too. I got to meet his parents as well at the Heisman ceremony, very good family. Um, you know, but against going against guys like that who are very competitive and you know, you're going to get their best. Um, I, I think that's going to be a fun one. To a lot of, a lot is going to be made of week to week, you know, the improvement for you. And when you look back now, I know it's only been a few days, but what are some of the things you look at and you say, okay, I missed, I can improve on. I, I, I'm seeing that I can do better in weeks moving forward. I, I, I think there's, there's room for improvement every day for me. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm getting more comfortable in the huddle, talking to the guys, giving the plays out um, and kind of seeing where everyone needs to go. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is pocket presence, um, being able to just step up into, you know, what feels like pressure. Um, and then also just, just making the throws that I need to, to um, you know, give the receivers good run after catch. Hi, Tua. Um, I'm hoping you can help me with a question about the Samoan sports culture. Uh, first, I'm wondering if you know the new Clemson quarterback. And also, I'm wondering what your reaction is to the way uh, Samoans are trending at that position. Seems like uh, Samoan kids used to all want to grow up to be junior Seab, but that's changed. Yeah, that's <laughs> – I do know DJ. Um, you know, I, I got to meet him and his family um, back at, at you know, some camps. While I was in college, you know, I'd go help out um, with some camps. But, man, I, I think it's something pretty cool. Um, to, to look around and see that our people, Samoan people are not always going to be, you know, on the opposite side of the ball or in the trenches, you know, on the D line, on the defense or, you know, on O line. Um, I think it's pretty cool to see that, um, you know, guys from our culture can also play skill positions. Um, and I mean, quarterback, I mean, that, I think that that speaks volume to, to I guess how they were raised as well and um, their upbringing too. So, hey, so I guess this is a good follow up to, to Steve's question. But um, you know, obviously on, on game day this past Sunday, the the social media team caught you walking in, um, you know, wearing uh, clothing of your of your culture tributes to uh, you know Samoan culture. Um, can you just speak a little bit about uh, you know the platform that you have to? Um, you know, in many different ways, but then you also remember the giving back to your, your culture in, in that way. Well, that's, that's how I've, I've been raised on Sundays. A lot of the times that's what we'd normally wear going to church. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just cultural, but being able to, to share that with the world, um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool that dolphins, have, you know, they captured that and, and posted on social media. 
and whatnot. But it's it's just a representation of of who you are, and I mean, also what you represent. Um, it's not just me and my family, but it's also our people as well. Um, you know, I, I'd say we're very prideful people. Um, we take pride in in a lot of things that we do, um, and at the same time, uh, respect is really big in our culture. Um, but yeah, I, the reason I, I do that is because every Sunday, normally after church, that's that's our attire. Uh, we talked to Chan yesterday, and he mentioned that the plan going in was to to take it safe, you know, to 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 kind of ease you into to the NFL. Do you feel like maybe this week? that's not going to be the case anymore that they're not going to let it rip, but obviously open up a lot more to, to what you might do. I believe my job is to, is to, you know, do whatever play call we're, we're given. If it's a run 20 times and it's a pass one time, I got to make it work that one time, you know, the pass is given and I got to carry out my fakes those 20 times. Um, but I, you know, I, I trust, and I think our offense trusts, you know, what Chan has planned for us offensively. Um, and we go into the, to the week, knowing the game plan, what we're going to do and, you know, how we're going to try to attack their defense. Um, but, you know, we have full trust that whatever Chan calls, we got to go out there and, and, you know, do good with it. Hey, Tua, good afternoon. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had asked you how much you were able to learn from sitting behind Ryan Fitzpatrick and watching the way he game plans and prepares. I'm curious now in the absence of a preseason and having no live bullets really up until your first start, how much more can that really help accelerate your growth and what you've seen in your game, having an actual NFL tape with a full game for yourself? I think that's, that's almost the best way I would say that's, that's pretty much the best way I think for anyone in the NFL to learn uh, you can sit down and anyone can watch film really, but being able to go in and get some actual game reps, seeing actual rotations of the defenses and you got to make actual mic points um, and do things like that. I think those things go a long way and sticking in your head and knowing, okay, if this comes up, I know what my answer is. Um, and then just the being comfortable, um, you know, as the games go on, you, you just get a good feel of the game. Um, and then you can also get into a good rhythm. Hey, Tua, um, I wanted to ask you about last weekend and kind of getting to share a big weekend with your brother. Two Tonga Bailoa wins, and you guys were on kind of the national stage together, and I'm sure that had to be special for you both. Yeah, that was very special. I think it was it was very special for our parents as well. It was very special for our family. Um, but it's it's always what's next, you know, you enjoy it that day. You enjoy it for, you know, the, those 24 hours, uh, but you got to keep working uh, to improve.